barber cut my hair, patchy head, hairline bent, cause last night he was on the bend. Saturday soup, semi seductive. Cho cho, sweet potato and pumpkin seeds await from our slumber we enter. My grandma's kitchen is her haven. I tried to touch the ladle, but she slapped my hand and put a tenner in my hand and says, Hey, boys, your hair growing long like sissy girl. It's time to get it trimmed. <laughs> yeah, my grand speech just like that. <laughs> Me and my brother exchange grins, knowing our time will come again. Making our way down Broadfield Road, our stroll of shame now underway. Making mockery of mis misfortunate massacres, our anecdotes always conjured laughter. And we crossed the road at the Beehive Pub, and it was thriving with punters despite its time. So, we arrived at the barber's book, the shutters were closed. Then Corby, the barber, leaned out of the upstairs window with his bare chest exposed. Coming down the stairs, this beautiful, unfamiliar blonde lady stood in the frame. But I suppose he did always say, yeah man, I can fit more than one potato upon my plate. He finally arrives and his breath smells like Appleton's. And I'm getting flashbacks of the kids in the playground teasing me with taunts like, yeah Reese, ever cut your hair must have Parkinson's. <laughs> Someone said it, yeah, it's that deep. 20 minutes in and this routine haircut is becoming a farce. And you know it's never a good thing if your barber ever says, oops, <laughs> mm -mm. sorry, wow, or ras. <laughs> <laughs> on my way home, I sat on the wall and cried because I asked him for a Nike tick, but instead I got a short back and snides. Uh, Thank you. Uh...